What's up everyone, welcome to Ben's Car Reviews. I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. Let's get right into it. There will be five different trim options to choose from for your 2024 Pathfinder. S, SV, SL, Rock Creek, and Platinum. Those are the same trims as last year. Price this year, that S is going to start you off at $35,810, which I don't think is that bad for starting um, trim on an eight passenger capable vehicle. Platinum will round you off yeah, significantly higher, just shy of $50,000. Engine options are getting the same 3.5 liter V6 across all trims. However, the Rock Creek will get you a little more power 295 horsepower, 270 pound fuel torque, whereas the rest gets you 284 and 259, but still not bad when it comes to power for the big old V6. New for 2024, you're getting a 9 speed automatic transmission instead of a CVT. Drivetrain, front wheel drive will be standard on those base three trims, but you can get four wheel drive. Four wheel drive will be standard for you on the Rock Creek and the Platinum. MPG numbers, they do bounce around a little bit based on front wheel drive, four wheel drive setup, or trim. The worst setup you can get will be that Rock Creek 20 city, 23 highway, but really not that bad considering how large this vehicle is and the engine that it has. The best setup you'll get will be the four wheel drive setup on those first three trims. Before we keep going, guys, I just want to mention, here at Ben's Car Reviews, I strive to bring the most accurate, relevant information under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no wasted time. If that's something that's intriguing to you and you like this content as you watch, please like and subscribe so I can continue to grow the channel. Let's keep going. We're going to look at Nissan's pictures now of this Pathfinder where we talk about the main features. Very much unchanged from the 2023 year lineup. Certainly unique design characteristics on Nissan models, especially on this Pathfinder. I don't find myself loving the front end, particularly the headlight design. But I do think the rear end is nice looking, and the side profile is smooth and not too boxy. However, I think Nissan went a bit too far against the norm and made it a little too round. The V-Motion grille has a three-slot grille incorporation to give tribute to the original Pathfinder. S, SV, and SL are relatively basic appearing and nothing too special on the outside. I feel the wheel designs are way behind the times. They just appear too simple to me and too easy. Rock Creek trim is that rugged off-road themed trim that they brought to you last year in the lineup because of course you can't have a lineup without that. It has the option of extra two-tone paint schemes and beefs up your ride with an off-road suspension, 18-inch black aluminum wheels with beadlock capability, wrapped in all-terrain tires, plus the black tubular roof rack setup. The Platinum trim gets you the most luxurious looking exterior with massive 20-inch machine finished wheels, which certainly are the best design of the bunch plus a hitch receiver with a wiring harness. The SL Premium Package on the outside gets you 20-inch dark painted aluminum alloy wheels and an enhanced transmission cooling system. Up to 6,000 pounds max towing on your Pathfinder, which is more than the competition. Five drive modes on a two-wheel drive setup. The four-wheel drive model gets you seven different drive modes, including mud, rut mode, sand mode, snow mode, tow mode, sport mode, and eco mode. LED headlights, LED DRLs, and LED wraparound taillights on all trims, rear spoiler for all trims as well, UV reducing solar glass, and rear privacy glass on all trims. So definitely some nice features there no matter which one you get. Numerous paint color options, which is something I am impressed with when it comes to Nissan. They do give you more than just basic or only dark earthy colors, which a lot of, trim, or a lot of models seem to be doing these days. Um, Power numbers and engine performance stack up and compare very well against its main competitors, such as the Toyota Highlander and Kia Telluride, both very popular models as we all know, so if the Pathfinder wants to be successful against those behemoths in the industry, then it needs to be as capable as it is, so good to see from Nissan. As far as best bang for your buck, I'm going to be very specific on this one. I'll choose the SV, add the four-wheel drive setup, and add the SV premium package. You'll see more what that entails on the inside in the next section. I see the benefit in just going with the SL, but starting 4K below that MSRP allows for adding the four wheel drive option and the premium package without ending up with a super high price. Going with those same options starting off with the SL will result in too high of a price for the features in my opinion, which we'll see next as well on the interior details. Inside now, I find the interior of the Pathfinder far more attractive than the outside. I think Nissan did well with it. Seating up to 8 with the bench sheet setup and 7 with captain's chairs, up to 80.5 cubic feet of storage inside your Pathfinder, an 8-inch infotainment screen is standard, and a 9-inch is available on the upper trims, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto capable. There's an available 12.3-inch widescreen driver's digital gauge cluster, which looks very crisp, very clean. Definitely nice to have one of that size. 
as well as an available heads-up display that will be right above it. Six-speaker sound system is standard, but a 13-speaker Bose system is optional. Cloth seats on the bottom trims, optional semi-aniline leather on the top. SV ramps up standard features including heated seats, remote start, and extra tech features. The SL gets you leather seats as well with a larger 9-inch infotainment touchscreen. That is one difference for the best bang for your buck. As to why I don't see the SL worth it, just for one more inch of screen. That's just one half inch on each side, guys. That's not a lot. The Rock Creek has exclusive Rock Creek leatherette appointed seats with unique centers and Rock Creek badging. Platinum gets you a panoramic moonroof, interior lighting, heated steering wheel, wireless charger, as well as heated and ventilated front seats. The SV Premium Package gets you second row fold down captain's chairs, second row removable center console with cup holders, power lift gate, and panoramic moonroof. SL Premium Package has the same features as the SV Premium, but adds the Bose Premium Audio, heated rear seats, and wireless charging. The Rock Creek and Platinum get you 10-way adjustable driver's seat, and the rest of the trims get you 6-way, and the Platinum will get you memory settings with that. ProPilot Assist with Navilink helps your commute with technology that can automatically adjust to the flow of traffic and help keep you centered in your lane, as well as mapping the road ahead. Nissan definitely sets you up well with standard driver's assist safety and technology features. Overall, I'm happy with this interior. I wish the sizes of the infotainment screens were larger. I feel the 9-inch for the base is okay instead of the 8, but the upper trims should have an option or standard as a 12-inch screen. Other than that, I'm not finding things to complain about given these price points. In review, guys, if you're in the market for a vehicle of this capability heading into 2024, you want three rows, you want eight seats for all your kids and all their friends, you're looking at this, you're looking at the Telluride and the Highlander, I'll mention those just because I already did in the video. Certainly a lot of things to compare. I think exterior design wise, this one is a bit behind all of its competitors. Um, maybe that's just me and how I see it. Maybe you feel different. I just feel that the, the Telluride is a very good looking vehicle. I think the Highlander isn't particularly flashy, but just flows a little better than this. Um, doesn't mean it's an ugly car. I'm not hating on Nissan, just my opinion. The inside though I think is great and does compare well with those. Screen size will be a little smaller, uh, but not the end of the world. Um, can't really harp on that in the overall scheme of the vehicle. But like I mentioned, if you're in the market for something like this, um, countless options well beyond the two that I just mentioned. Map them all out, test drive, see what you like. Um, maybe this Pathfinder will fit your needs perfectly and hopefully you can get it for a pretty affordable price. But thank you for watching Spence Car Review. Uh, hopefully this late things out and clear way for you guys. Uh, please subscribe if not already. If you have an idea for a future review, um, drop in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Um, if you like to become a member of the channel, have that option now. Uh, join if you'd like, and I'll catch you on the next Fence Car Review.